Welcome to Course 453, Section 1, International Organizations. Section 1, Understanding International Organization. Introduction. This study session will lay a conceptual foundation for the course. In doing so, we will examine the meaning, reason, functions, and classification of international organizations learning outcomes. When you have studied this session, you should be able to define and use correctly the term international organizations, outline the origin of international organizations, give reasons for the proliferation of international organizations, highlight the functions of international organizations, classify international organizations, the meaning of international organizations, in the 20th century, humanity witnessed two world wars, a Cold War, and dozens of civil wars, many of which still persist today. Terrorism has also become a cause for global concern among the several other problems that now constitute huge challenges to humanity. So what do we do to solve these problems? One option is that we just fold our arms and do nothing and let all of these challenges consume us all. Another option is that each state should do what it deems fit. But if every country follows its own part to solving the problem, such efforts could be counterproductive. For example, if to solve the problem of global warming, Country A decides to reduce its greenhouse gas emission and country B does the opposite, nothing will be achieved. The third option is to create an international organization that will galvanize and mobilize efforts to solve challenges and threats that confront humanity. In the 20th century, it is the third option that resonates in the effort that have been evolved to tackle transnational challenges as evident in the proliferation of international organizations to such an extent that on almost every issue over and above the traditional state-to-state -state diplomatic network, there exists a more or less permanent framework of institutions through which collective measures can be realized. Heavens and Newham, 1997. The third option is to create an international organization that would galvanize and mobilize effort to solve challenges and threats. Although states still remain the primary actors in the international system, they now represent one group among other significant actors like international organizations which are increasingly providing frameworks for global governance. Reflection International organizations are more or less permanent multilateral structures established by government and non-governmental bodies for the pursuit of specific or general objectives which may be economic, political, sociocultural, or technical in nature. International organizations with permanent structures, membership, and procedures are one-way state and non-state actors have tried to institutionalize diplomacy and collective peace. Cabo and Ray, 2011, page 303. The proliferation of international organizations reflects the application of the principle of liberalism, which emphasizes the importance of international institutions in global politics as arena for communication, diplomatic bargaining, and alternative to conflict. International organizations are institutional responses to international problems. They are concrete, tangible structures with specific functions and missions in the international system. Hint: A variety of actors are involved in the crucial issues of world politics. These are state and non-state actors that form important part of the global environment. Realist theorists see states as the only important actors in international system. However, 
Since after the Second World War, the world has witnessed a proliferation of non-state actors that affect the possibilities and probabilities of state actions. Non-state actors in the contemporary global system include international organizations, IOs, and one type of IO, the Intergovernmental Organization, IGO, and another type, the International Non-Governmental Organization, INGO, have become important actors in international relations. They help to shape the menu for state leaders and the range of state behavior in the international system. Origins of international organizations International organizations are a modern phenomenon. All of them were created in the 20th century. However, their origins extend far back in history. Their origins can be traced to the following factors. Belief in community of humankind. International organizations are rooted in a universalistic belief in the concern for humanity. The idea is that all humans share a common bond and all persons share the responsibility for each other's welfare. Early philosophers like William Penn and Immanuel Kant believed that the way to accomplish these ends was through general international organizations. This idea was the brain behind the formation of the League of Nations and the United Nations. Member states of the United Nations, regardless of their size, each occupy a seat on the United Nations General Assembly, giving every member state a sense of belonging. Big Power Peacekeeping IGOs also evolved from the idea that powerful countries have a special responsibility to cooperate and preserve peace. Gugrotieros, often referred to as the father of international law, opined that the major Christian powers cooperate to mediate or arbitrate the disputes of others or even, if required, to compel warring parties to assert peace. Rook 2007 Grotius' argument reflects the view that the survival of any international order is a function of the resolve of the powerful state to make it work. This point was evident in 1815 when powerful states formed an informal coalition known as the Concert of Europe. Through balance of power diplomacy, the concert of this powerful state managed to keep the peace until the outbreak of the First World War. Today, this idea is evident in the Security Council in the United Nations. The Charter of the United Nations first the Security Council with the primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. The Security Council is made up of five permanent members which are the big powers in the world today, although some other powerful states have since emerged. Factional Cooperation The formation of international organizations has been driven by sheer necessity. The increasing complex nature of the challenges confronting humanity has created the need for specialized agencies to deal with specific non-political, technical, and social problems. The growth of specialized IGOs has been phenomenal. The oldest surviving specialized IGOs are the Central Commission for the Navigation of the Rhine, 1815, the International Telegraphic Now Telecommunications Union, 1865, and the Universal Postal Union, 1874. The World Health Organizations, International Atomic Energy Agency, and similar organizations are either affiliated with or work in collaboration with the United Nations. Growth of International Organizations the 20th century has witnessed a rapid growth in the number of international organizations. Generally, by taking advantage of international organizations, states are able to achieve goals that they cannot accomplish alone. Thus, the growth of international organizations occurred because international actors found that they need them and that they work. In terms of quantity, the number of well-established IGOs increased sevenfold from 37 in 1909 to 251 in 2004, Rook 2007. Apart from the quantitative growth, IGOs have expanded in their range of concerns and roles. Indeed, there are now few 
if any major political issues that are not addressed at the international level by one or more international organizations and few governmental roles that international organizations do not play. In some cases, existing IGOs take up new roles such as the role the UN is playing in combating terrorism, biological warfare, and environmental degradation. In other cases, countries join to create new IGOs to address emerging areas of global concern. The establishment of the International Mobile Satellite Organization, IMASAT, in 1979 was in response to the development of satellites, the ability to communicate to them, and the need to coordinate it. The expansion of IGOs has created a complex network of overlapping international organizations that cooperate with one another to deal with a wide range of global issues. Why are IGOs growing in quantity and in their scope? One, one of the forces behind the proliferation of IGOs is the increased contact among people and state as a result of revolution in communications and transportation technologies. It is due to the increased exchanges and interactions between and among states that IGOs have been created to provide organizational structures so that these interactions become formalized. Increased global interdependence has encouraged the growth of IGOs particularly in the economic sphere. The expansion of transnational problems that affect many states and require solutions that are beyond the sources of any single state like nuclear proliferation, terrorism, etc. The effort of small states to gain strength through joint action in order to influence international events. This led to emergence of organizations like non-aligned movement G77 now with more members, OPEC, etc. The failure of the current state system to provide security the assistance and successes of other international organizations provide models and tentacles for other organizations to emerge. Roles of international organizations International organizations perform many roles. One important role of international organizations is rule-making. It is believed that the rules that guide international actors are products of international organizations. However, some have argued that international organizations only give legitimacy to rules, not to make the rules. International organizational organizations also help in the enforcement of rules through sanctions and other measures against Henry members. They also help in fostering peaceful cooperation among states. It is believed it is better to keep states functionally together instead of having them stay apart, which makes room for suspicion. International cartels, like the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries OPEC, are used to regulate the prices and supply of their product in order to protect their interests. Some international organizations also handle international security challenges. Some handle issues of development and economic stability, while others take of humanitarian issues. Specifically, international organizations perform the following functions. One. They provide an arena for communication, interaction, negotiation, and diplomacy. 2. IOs provide avenues for states to cooperate to solve problems. 3. IOs are independent actors that can take independent decisions, although what IGOs do is controlled by the wishes and votes of its members, in reality, IGOs have developed strong and relatively permanent administrative staff. Organizational independence is intended and established in the charters of various IGOs, Rook 2007. Classifications of international organization International organizations can be categorized in various ways. Some international organizations are global in scope, other are regional or just bilateral. Some are general in their purpose while others have specific functional purposes. It is therefore imperative to distinguish between types of international organizations. There are intergovernmental governmental organizations and international non-governmental organizations. Intergovernmental governmental organizations (IGOs) they can be divided into global or regional organizations and grouped by functions into general or specialized international organizations. 
These categories and some examples of each are discussed below. One commonality among some of them is that their memberships consist of national governments. Therefore, they are termed international intergovernmental organizations, IGOs. Here we have as the United Nations, UN, European Union, EU, African Union, AU, Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, and etc. IGOs may be usefully classified according to the scope of their membership and the scope of their purpose. There are universal political organizations such as the former League of Nations and the United Nations which aim to include as wide an international membership as possible. Such organizations are also general purpose organizations in that they perform political, economic, military, social, cultural and other functions for member states. Other general purpose organizations have more restricted memberships. One form of classification is according to the purpose and scope of membership. Since IOs are established for certain purposes, it is important to note how broad or narrow are the reasons for which they have been established. To understand this issue, we shall introduce two concepts, scope and domain. See Evans and Newham, 1997. Scope refers to the range of issues an IO exercises control over, while domain refers to the range of state that an IGO exercises control over. The issues are as varied as trade, defense, disarmament, economic development, agriculture, health, culture, human rights, the arts, illegal drugs, labor, women's issues, tourism, crime, the environment, immigration, refugees, science, and so on. The IGOs we'll be considering in this course can be organized according to the scope of membership and range of their purpose as indicated below. International Non-Governmental Organizations This is the other type of international organizations made up of transnational actors made up of private organizations and individuals instead of member states. Examples of these are Transparency International, Amnesty International, Multinational Corporations, MNCS, International Committee of the Red Cross, Red Crescent, etc. Study Session Summary In this study session, we focused on the concept of international organizations and we noted that they are more or less permanent structures formed by state and non-state actors operating across state borders in pursuit defined goals which may be economic, political, social, cultural, technical, etc. International organizations have become increasingly important in international affairs performing vital functions, mobilizing states for common action and helping to solve complex problems. The growth of international organizations is happening quantitatively number and in terms of the range of issues that international organizations make decisions over. Increased contact, interdependence, growth in transnational problems, failure of the state system to solve the problems of humanity and the success of international organizations has led to rapid growth of IGOs. Lastly, IGOs provide an arena for communication, cooperation, and have ability to act independently, though this varies from one organization to the other. This is the end of study section 1. Thanks for listening.